In the criminal justice system, the people Pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address and men who don't care Are represented by two separate yet equally important groups A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, your poison, your trouble, your bad news These are their stories By the way, Albert, did you tweet that we're on the air today or not? I actually did tweet. Did you really? Pre- wow! Pre-show, it was a pre-show tweet that I was. I told Kim that I would lie on air and say I didn't tweet, but yeah. I did tweet. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty great. I, I meant to ask you that, of course, when you first went on. I will uh, retweet. Kind of late now, with twelve minutes left in the show. It is. Yeah, you know. It is. I did yeah, mention well. that you can watch and replay too. So you know. Yeah, a lot of people. Most of our most of our viewers everything. are in replay. That's true. Actually. That's true. Um, and uh, now, my friends, to the uh, sad news. Or is it good news? It's the good and the sad out of law and disorder. A man who escaped Pennsylvania jail by sliding down tied bed sheets. I gotta say, that's a wild idea, but it just... Ooh, it's a wild idea, but it just might work. Yeah. Uh, he gets 25 to 50 years on kidnapping and escape convictions. That's right. Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania County Jail last year was the scene of a man escaping. That's right. He tied those bed sheets together. They got out. Michael Burham. There he is. Young guy with a dream of freedom. Nope. Not so fast. <laughs> he was sentenced to three and a half to seven years in prison, specifically for his July escape from the Warren County Prison. But then... He was being held in part on kidnapping allegations. What happened was, and we think we told you this story, he climbed on workout equipment and he got out through the roof and shimmied down a rope of sheets. I'm going to ding shimmied. I think that that is a dingish. Shimmy, shimmy, shake. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was out. <laughs> um. And he was running. Burham, who authorities said had military reserve experience and survivalist skills, prompted an intense manhunt. You mm-hmm. may remember it. We reported on it here. More than 200 law enforcement officers. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> um, he was captured in a wooded area near Warren, Pennsylvania. He was jailed on charges related to allegations that he kidnapped an older couple in Pennsylvania, drove them to South Carolina while trying to evade a separate investigation in New York. This is a bad dude. He was on the lam for a while. Yeah, in the kidnapping case, the judge ordered a sentence of 21 years. Yeah. Uh, the two sentences taken together mean Burham has been ordered to serve from 25 years and two months to 50 years and four months. You know, once you get those 50 years in, the four months are the tough part. You know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, good luck. To Mr. He was just born at the wrong time. I feel like the bed sheets, great move, but trying to escape in with all the technology and cell phones is kind of hard. But uh, agreed, uh, very tough. An ATV daredevil took on the cops again, running from them on an ATV. He is 17 years old. He was arrested. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Officers spotted the ATV rider traveling near the 91 freeway in Southern California, Riverside County. He was standing on the seat doing wheelies, making hand <laughs> gestures at police. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Do you see it there, Albert? Here, Albert's showing it to you now. You can see him on the ATV. Yeah. Down the kinda... freeway? No, it's wow. not a freeway, but it's a, it's a, you can see it's a four lane. It's a th- oh, yeah. three or oh, four. Oh, hey, lane that's, you can't turn from there. What? I guess you can. You can if you're on an ATV. Look at him go. Oh, wow. He's having fun. Uh, the sheriff's department's off road team eventually responded to the call. At one point, they had tracked this guy by helicopter. The 17-year-old was eventually arrested. He's been booked into a juvenile detention facility to avoid possible charges for felony evading. This brings me around to what I always talk about from time to time, which is the old ages that we apply to many of these. Now, this is, you know, again, you don't have to view this as a 
violent crime or anything like that, although yeah. you could argue that he's endangering public safety or oh, whatever. Totally. But I would just say that uh, totally. the 17 year olds now, I, I wouldn't put them in, you know, I don't know. I don't see them as quite as juvie as they used to be. <laughs> if I can sound like an angry old man, I just think that uh, these, this society and culture has evolved in a way that 17 year olds in general are, they're adults. They make a lot of adult decisions. They make decisions to, mm -hmm take on the cops, to steal stuff, to kill people. Uh, obviously, I'd like to see the underpinnings of their development helped mm -hmm. with after-school programs and a lot of facilities to really enable a lot of these kids to realize potential that doesn't involve, you know, mayhem or craziness. But I think when those members of society who are 17 so that mayhem and craziness, they have to be looked at in a different way. And I think we still see them as kids. And they are on some level, but... Well, their brains aren't fully cooked, right? Right. But in, okay. depending on how many months, at 18, all of a sudden we consider them fully cooked. So yeah. they're somewhere close to fully cooked. Mm -hmm. A boyfriend of a woman who died falling off a cliff during a proposal is arrested Maybe it wasn't such a proposal after all, Kim. <laughs> no, not the kind of proposal you're looking for. I propose that you die and that I leave. <laughs> Yesim Demir's family said that she was planning on ending things with her boyfriend. She would have declined his proposal and the opportunity to marry him. What led investigators to realize that it wasn't a marriage proposal was evidence of a struggle. Uh-oh. She fell 100 feet. But prior to that, there was evidence of a struggle. There the two of them are. And Nezametin Gursu was taken into custody five months after his girlfriend, Yassim Demir, plummeted to her death in Turkey. This happened over the summit. Over the summer, I should say, Turkish news outlet Birgun reported that the chief prosecutor's office is charging him with deliberate murder. Oh, he Gersu, pushed her off the cliff? Gersu told cops that he went to get a celebratory picnic basket from his car after Demir, who is 39 years old, accepted his sunset marriage proposal. He rushed back to the site with the picnic basket to celebrate, you see, Kim. Mm -hmm. And he heard her scream and saw her laying at the bottom of the cliff. Sure he did. She was pronounced dead 45 minutes after medics tried life-saving efforts. During the investigation, though, police say they found evidence that indicated Demur actually turned down Gersu's marriage offer with the engagement ring still inside a box mm -hmm. inside the suspect's pocket. Shattered glass and a broken music speaker also recovered from the proposal spot, indicating an alleged struggle. According to a criminal complaint, again, this is filed against the groom-to-be. They say that Demir's death was not an accident, but murder. And they also, family members say, that Demir was planning on ending things with Gersu would have declined the opportunity to marry him, and that may have been what provoked her being pushed off the cliff to her sad end. That is the sad end to law and disorder. Hi, it's Mark, and I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped, and please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.